13 years. I'm pretty happy to be a state employee, and I realize I'm kind of biased, but we have pretty good benefits. Um, and of course, the benefits and insurance has become pretty volatile with all the different laws and the Affordable Care Act and things. So um, I think we've got a pretty good deal here at the state. So um, part of what you should already have, it looks like on, on, on your desk there, is uh, some of this information. There's a new hire checklist, um, and that's kind of a informative to make sure that you know what some of your rights and responsibilities are, as well as the agency making sure that they've informed you of some of these things going forward. Um, you should be getting booklets. Um, right now, we're waiting for the 2017 book to be reprinted and put out on the website, but there is a 2016 book that you can get. A Delta Dental book, there's a life insurance book. Um, the applications, I've seen it on some of your um, plates, so to speak. There's an app for health, dental, and life. There's an app for the voluntary and um, your flex election form, so you should have all of those. Um, and we'll go over those benefits in detail. This is the new hire checklist. One of the most important things to know is what your date of coverage is going to be. And we, in essence, means date of eligibility, the date you're eligible to be covered. So if you got hired on February 1st, you're eligible for benefits 3-1. So that's your date of eligibility. And the reason that's important is that most people just get their apps in right away and they make their decisions and they try to try to get folks to do it typically the first of the month following your date of hire but you have 31 days from the date you're eligible for coverage to make any revisions so if you got hired on february 28th you have until the end of march to get your apps in or make any changes if you're hired on february 1st you still have until march 31st because you have 31 days from the date your coverage will start to enroll or revise um, your applications must be turned in within the 31 days. That's everywhere because you just can't stay the month. Um, service, your coverage does start first of the month following your data hire, unless you're a TPO one. Um, and then there's a 90 day waiting period that we can talk about more. Um, I want to explain how the state contribution works. There's a set amount you'll see on our website for single coverage, employee plus children, employee plus spouse and family. Um, and the way this works is that the contribution pays for your employee life insurance first. So you won't ever see it on your paycheck. If you elect it, you just won't see it because it's not an employee deduction because you didn't pay it, your fringe or match pay it. Once your life insurance is paid, then your health insurance applies towards it. And most people and most deductible options will leave you having an amount that's owed. So just to know how that contribution works, it applies to health, dental, and life, just those three basic um, benefits, and all the other benefits we have are considered voluntary benefits that you pay for. Uh, dependent eligibility, we just want to make it known up front that um, we didn't used to do this, but it is an industry standard that we require verification that your dependents are really your dependents. Um, that means if you've got children you're putting on your policy, we need a birth certificate to show that they're your dependent. Uh, a spouse, we need a marriage certificate to know that you're legally married. Um, we do have situations where if you're adding single coverage, if you're putting yourself on coverage and the stepchild say, that's it, we would need your marriage certificate and their birth certificate to tie that stepchild to you. Um, it is required within 31 days of the application deadline. So we talked about you have 31 days from the date you're eligible for coverage. If you turn your app in on time but don't have that birth certificate yet, you have 31 days from the deadline of the application to get it in. And that's in any situation. Somebody two years down the road to be as a baby, those, those rules still apply. But just know that we require verification that they're yours. Uh, I don't know if this is going to apply to everybody, but just so that you know, um, split coverage is really family coverage. And this was instituted to make sure it was equitable for two agencies. So you work at health and your spouse works at YDOT. There's no reason health needs to be on the hook for the entire family contribution. So it's family that we split in half. Half comes out of your paycheck, half comes out of your spouse's. And then the contribution from the agency is also equitably split. But you have to have employee, a spouse, and a children. I mean, it has to be family. If it's just you and a spouse, and you both work for opposing agencies, but there's no kids, then it's two singles. So if you hear the word split thrown around, or you're, or you're told that you might be split, it's probably going to raise questions, but you've got HR or you've got us. So just to know that it exists. Um, effective dates, again, um, first of the month following your date of hire is typical, unless you're TPO1. 
Um, any kind of revisions and deadlines, your applications must, must, must be signed by HR within 31 days from the date you're eligible for coverage. And in the future, if you have any kind of qualifying events, that used to be 31 as well, but we've extended it to make it 60 days. So you've got your spouse, you've got a baby, you've got 60 days from that event to get your apps in saying, hey, I want to put Joe on my coverage. And then from that app deadline, you'd have up to 31 days to get your document, supporting documentation in. <coughs> So the most basic question is, what insurance do I want to take? What deductible? What are these plans about? So we, the best way that I can, from a layman's standpoint, explain it is the apple and the orange. Uh, they're not the same. Um, you can see here that there's a 500 slash 1,000. That's a deductible choice. In the Cigna book, it's called option one, option two. But when you look at your application, there's a lot of information squeezed on there. It says 350, 500, it says 900. So we call them by the deductible name. The way this works is that the 500 is an individual deductible. So you've got four people on the plan, and you go to the doctor and you are assessing your deductible and paying your out of pocket deductible. You meet your 500. Woohoo! Now that the 500 is paid, your claims go to a co insurance or a percent. So, preferably 85% if you're seeing a networked doctor in Wyoming. The reason that that's beneficial is that if there are four of you on the plan and you're the only one that needs services all year, you're not waiting for anyone else in the family to meet any additional deductible. You meet your individual, boom, you go straight to a co-insurance percent. What's good though with four people on the plan, just using it as the example, if you meet your 500 and your husband Joe meets 200 and then one of your kids meets more, it's a cumulative family. So once $1,000 is met for the family for that calendar year, there's no more deductible. So Johnny the third goes in and family's already been met, he just doesn't have any. So it's a, a single and or cumulative family. If there's only two of you, the math's the math. <laughs> 500, 500 is 1,000. Um, so that's how that works. So both uh, employee and families have a deductible. Um, on the Apple, you've got prescriptions that are set copay so that when you go into the pharmacy, you know up front you're going to pay either 10 for a generic brand generic prescription, 20 for a preferred brand, and 50 for a non-preferred brand. So the point there is that it's preset, and there's still three choices, but it's going to be one of those three. You're not going to go in and get some antibiotic and pay $800. Um, you know you're paying 10, 20, or 50. So um, for colonoscopies, is a wellness benefit. Those are on this Apple are paid at 100% every five years, regardless of any kind of the diagnosis. That's critical because the orange is different. So a high deductible health plan can only be called that if it meets the IRS guidelines to be considered a high deductible health plan. Clearly, you've got a 2000 which would be higher than 1500 but the way the plan is designed, it doesn't qualify as a high deductible health plan. In order to qualify as a high deductible health plan, the deductible is a one or the other. So if it's just you, you've got 1500 If it's you and a whole family, or you and one kid, or you and a spouse, anything more than single, you've got a $3,000 deductible and it has to be paid for anything, pays on anybody. So it's, if you've got a family of five, that's, or I don't have $3,000 in the bank, so I can't, you know, I'm not willing to take that risk, but just know that that's the way it works, it's one or the other. Nine to meet this qualification. The other part is that on the orange, your prescriptions are part of the major medical. So unlike those preset copays, it's gonna find your deductible. So you go to Albertsons and get an amoxicillin, and it might be, there's still a discount. You still want to present your Cigna or your prescription ID card in order to get it to apply to your deductible, and there's still a discount involved, but you may be paying 150 bucks for an antibiotic versus 190. I'm just making that up off the street, um, but it's going to apply to your deductible. So those are the two really big differences in this orange and apple. The other part is that the colonoscopy is covered every five years 100% if it's diagnostic. And a lot of times, somebody who goes and gets a colonoscopy, hopefully, it's, they don't find anything. But if there's a polyp and they remove it, it's now a medical procedure. So that's going to apply to your deductible. So it's, it's different. You just want to be made aware of it. And the reason that this is important is once we get into some of the other benefits, you can have them if you have the orange, or you can have it if you have the apple. So it just depends that way. Any questions off, right off the bat with deductibles before we just move on? So once your deductible is met, then you have this co-insurance. And for me, the easiest way to explain this is, I don't want to say you're a winner because that's not nice, but um, if you're in network and in Wyoming, in and in, 
it pays 85%. Um, if, if you're either, if you're not both in and in, <laughs> it's 75%. So a Wyoming doctor who's not participating as part of the network is going to pay 75%. Um, and even if they are in network but they're in Colorado, um, it's going to pay it 75%. Um, if you're out and out, it's 60. I mean, if you're in Idaho on vacation and decide to go in for sinusitis, that's not an emergency. It needs to be treated, uh, but it's paid at 60%. Um, it's always advisable that you see an in-network doctor. Um, even if you're getting your claim paid at 75% after your deductible, if your doctor is, or provider is participating, they may pay 70, we say they pay 75%, you're on the hook for the other 25, but if they're non-par or non, they're not in network, you can get stuck holding the rest of the bill. Um, if you're in Wyoming and they're not participating, if they are participating, you just you just pay 25%. But you just gotta be careful. I mean, at least you're not locked down to not having benefit. If you decide you want a doctor in Colorado, say, and they're in network, you're still gonna pay it 75%. Um, but just be aware of, of what your responsibility would be. Um, and then if there is emergency care here in Idaho and there's an emergency, it's just gonna pay at 75%. Um, it's, it's those things you do outside of the state and outside of the network that aren't emergencies. Those are the things that, that kind of ding you at 60%. So. All right, so that's the health. And we can go back with any questions you guys have as, as it sinks in. Um, the dental insurance is pretty straightforward. There's a preventive dental and an optional dental. Preventive dental is required if you take the health insurance. Um, that typically comes down to the fact that if you're not taking care of your mouth, you can get bad stuff happening to your body. So your mouth is an indication of the rest of your health. So it is required if you have health, you have to have preventive. There's no deductible or anything with this. Services are covered at 100% for diagnostic and preventive services. Um, that's if you're seeing a contracted dentist. And Delta Dental of Wyoming is the big name in town, and just about all the dentists are contracted. Uh, but you should check on yours. Um, covers uh, exams and cleanings twice a year, so long as they're separated by at least five months. Uh, covers bite wings every 12 months and full mouth x-ray every 24. So it's just basically all of your preventive and um, diagnostic stuff. The optional is optional. However, if you don't take it when you first can, there's a three-year waiting period to try to get it again. You can't, well, my teeth are good. And then you find out six months later you need a crown. Sorry, Charlie. Um, so if you take it, there's a $50 deductible per year per person. But kind of like the health, there's also a cumulative family. So if I need 50, my husband needs 50, and then my son goes in and needs to have a cavity or something, there's no deductible. It maxed out at 100. Services are paid 50% after your deductible for your major services. And this just changed January of this year. Everything was always 50-50. Um, so it's just changed to 80% for basic services. And that's your cavities. Um, I'm not going to get too detailed. You need to read the, the print in the Delta Dental book because there are some root canals, I believe, are part 80%. Um, some crowns are, some crowns aren't. Um, but at least it's not 50-50 across the board. There are some services that are covered 80%. However, you are still limited that Delta Dental will only pay out $1,500 per year per person. So if I have two crowns, that's a bad example, if I have two root canals, I'm just going to meet my $1,500 faster. But if I have one cavity throughout the year, yay, I got paid at 80%. So, um, but if you don't take the, the optional and you only take preventive, you can get your cleanings and your x-rays, but you're not going to get anything paid for any corrective work or restorative work. And again, if you don't take it, you've got to wait three years. So it's February. I'm just going to, you know, assuming you, people got hired in February and you don't take it now. So you think, okay, three Februarys from now, that's three years, but we only allow you to enroll during open enrollment, which is in November. So you could wait upwards of four years. So you have to admit at least the full year, full three-year waiting period, and then do it during open. So. Uh, we do offer life insurance to just change carriers to standard as of January, and these are the rates for active employees. Um, if you take, if you want dependent life, um, you have to take employee life. Of course, we don't want you to insure your spouse, but not insure yourself. Um, so if you take, if you want dependent life, um, you have to also take employee life. Um, dependent life is a whopping buck 46. That's it, and it covers however many dependents you have. We don't list those dependents. Um, Gosh forbid, at the point of an issue where somebody were to file a death claim, a life claim, 
um, we would just verify that they were really eligible and that you were paying for it and that we would be good to go. If you don't take life insurance when you're first eligible, you do have to go through proof of good health later, uh, which means a standard will either approve you or deny you. Uh, this is the voluntary application. You got it in your packet. I just wanted to show it to you. We don't have booklets, per se, on the voluntary benefits. So the back of the application gives you a pretty good synopsis of how the vision works and how the disability works. Um, on the front of the application, the state does offer long-term care. It's not payroll deducted any longer, uh, but this is how you would certainly enroll in it um, and make payment arrangements through GenWorth. That's who the long-term care is through. This will also give you information on the, on the vision that if you don't take it, um, you have to wait for two years. If you do take vision, you have to commit to it for two years. Um, we don't want you to get on and get your glasses and then just jump, jump back off. So you've got to keep it for two years. Um, disability also has some um, penalties. Short-term disability, especially as new hires, most new hires don't have a bank of time. Um, so gosh forbid something happens to you, very seldom you get something that ensures your uh, pay. So short well, it's on the next screen. I'll go into it. Read the back of the book. And we, even though we don't have a book, that we've made a brochure that's out on our website as well. Um, so if you want to print this off uh, for yourself, because you're going to turn your application back in, um, this kind of, again, gives you just a synopsis on how the vision is built, how it works, uh, same with the disability and the long-term care. So the vision benefits are, you've got two options on your application. There's plan C and plan B. And really the only difference is how often you can get frames. If you get frames every single year, it's the, it's the higher price one because you're getting them more often. Both plans, you get an exam every year. Both plans, you can get lenses every year. Frames, 12, 12 months versus 24. Uh, contacts, you can get every year. Um, and then there's a material co- if you go for an eye exam, which is, I think it used to be about 90 bucks uh, before I had the VSP. I think it's running more like 130 these days. Um, so you're going to pay 10 bucks for your eye exam. So it's pretty straightforward. On your materials, you're going to get lenses or frames. There's a $25 material copay, and then you get a $160 allowance towards your glasses. Um, I went into Shine Eye Clinic and got these a couple weeks ago. Um, they were going to cost me $150. Um, that's with the allowance with my material copay. And then I had to add a little tiny, tiny bifocal, which doubled it. <clears throat> But um, it's, 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 a, it's like a prepaid vision plan because you're paying $16.78 $16 a month, say, for vision, and you have to keep it for 24 months. So you can multiply that by 24 and see what you're going to pay. But the amount of money you save by getting glasses or getting your exam paid at a whopping, you know, that you only have to pay 10 bucks, it's a pretty good benefit. But it's very defined. Um, and I will tell you, VSP is the best customer service ever. Um, so refractions and lots of those other terms that, I'm not an eye person, so you can contact VSP's customer service with any kind of scenarios, or this is my situation, and you can do them before you enroll in it even, if you wanted to really figure out whether or not it's just a good benefit for you. Short-term disability, you know, I've been in state for 13 years, and I still carry both short and long. Um, like I said, new hires don't usually have a book, a, a bank of, of sick or annual. So if something happens to you, it's gonna, short term is going to pay out 66 and two-thirds of your gross pay. Um, we make this benefit come out of, if you elect it, comes out of your paycheck on a tax, after a tax basis, so you pay taxes on it, your income is taxed, and then the, your insurance is deducted out of it. The reason that we make it that way is that if you, gosh forbid, had a claim, not only are you getting 66 and two-thirds of your gross, but you don't pay taxes on that money that you're receiving as income. Um, so it's pretty good. And even though I've got a pretty good bank sick time, at 173 hours a month that you would typically use, so it's only going to last me three months. So then I'm out of sick time, and this will pay up to six months, so I continue to carry it. Um, <coughs> there is a 14-day waiting period, so if I have a claim, I'm out of work, I'm disabled, I'm going to have to wait 14 days, and then it'll start kicking in pain. If you don't take this as a new hire when you're first eligible, but then six months down the road, road just like, crap, I should have taken that. Bottom button. <coughs> I'm sure my finger hit it. I'm not sure what happened here. There oh, we go. sweet. Okay. Um, if you if you six months later you decide, oh, I should have taken that, you can enroll in it and we'll give it to you. But during that first year that you have it, there's a 60-day penalty. So if you file a claim in that first year, you can 
get paid, but it won't pay up for a full 60 days. That's the penalty. Once a year has come and gone, you're good to go. You're back to the 14-day window like everybody else. So if te what tends to happen is if somebody finds out they're pregnant, they're like, oh, I should have taken it. This isn't necessarily going to help them because that 60-day penalty that they make you wait before they pay, um, pregnancy or delivery is usually a preset amount of time, so you've already, you're just not going to get anything. So if a person was trying, they should make sure they have it. <laughs> uh, Long-term disability picks up at the, end of a six, uh, at the end of six months, and that pays 60% of your gross monthly income. Um, and that can actually pay up to the age of 65. I'm not sure how you stay employed that long. And uh, there are people that if you are on claim and a person has had to actually terminate employment since they've already had the claim in ongoing, standard does continue paying it out. So I find that amazing too. But it's one of those things that I'd rather pay for it and never need it than need it and have no income. So there's something to consider. Long-term disability, if you don't take that as a new hire and you decide you want it later, you can apply for it, but you've got to go through an underwriting process and standard will either approve you or deny you. So sometimes it's best to take it read through the, the certificate or the material, and then you could, these, these short and long term, you can drop it any time, unlike the vision where you have to commit for two years. Any question? I'm trying to make sure I make eye contact with you because I know that this is interesting information, and I'm throwing it at you pretty quickly, so stop me or, or please slow me down if you need more. I don't mean to. Yeah. You change agencies in state government? Mm -hmm. Can you like to take it again? No. Um, if you go from health to YDOT, or we cover uh, the community colleges, um, it's just a, considered a transfer. So unless you actually terminate, you paid all your sick and annual, and you sever employment, and then you get hired, you know, later by somebody else. Um, but otherwise, it just flips. So you're not really considered a new hire, just a transfer. So, so flexible benefits. You've got this form as well. Um, this one is. Um, primary one, this is just what the form looks like. Let me go to this other screen. This breaks it down closer. So you can see here the black banner that this insurance premium, have, whether your insurance is pulled from your paycheck and then you pay taxes, which means you didn't pay tax on the insurance premium, or you pay tax on all your income and then your insurance is deducted. Um, I know that we work for the government, but I still want to give the government any of my money I don't have to. So if you do it pre-tax, depending upon how much premium comes out of your paycheck um, for the health and the dental, you just don't pay any taxes on that particular amount of your income. Um, but if you take that, you're locked into your benefits. You can't just make changes real quickly. Um, the IRS says, hey, if we're going to give you a tax break, you need to be locked into your um, insurance unless you have like, a qualifying event. Um, if you take post-tax, you can drop your insurance anytime you want unless there's a waiting period, a commitment like the vision and the dental. Um, but you could drop your health if you were post-tax. You could drop your kid off your plan if you were post-tax. You don't need any kind of qualifying event. You just aren't getting that tax advantage by not paying tax on, I don't know, 100 bucks of your premium. So if you have questions about that, you're welcome to give our office a call. Um, once you make that election, it stays in place every year until such time as you fill one of these out and say, hey, I want the other. We don't make you fill it out every year. The other part of the page, however, is where your reimbursement accounts come in, and these you actually have to do every single year. Um, I've got to tell you, if you've never experienced uh, medical reimbursement accounts, it is the bomb. It's interest-free. Um, I say that because I had a dental implant in January, I don't know how many years ago, um, and the medical reimbursement account says that you could be reimbursed even though your money hasn't been put into the account yet. So I'm electing $100 a month to come out of my paycheck to be set aside pre-tax, I'm not paying tax on it, which is awesome. Um, and then when I file a claim with group insurance, here's my EOB from Delta Dental that says I'm responsible for X amount for my dental implant. You're reimbursing yourself with your own money, but I can't get the credit union to give me $1,600 or $1,200 interest-free. I'll just pay it back 100 bucks a month. So it's really cool that you can not pay tax on this money and you can get it right away. You have to have a qualifying medical or dental expense and file a claim. So there's you know, the standard business groups in there. Um, but it's really pretty cool. The maximum right now is $2,500 a year. Um, you can divide that out by however many months of employment you have in 17 and deduct that amount. So I'm just another slide in here on, on Flux. Uh, we also have a daycare account, and that allows you to do a maximum of $5,000 per family, um, which is standard for IRS. And again, you have 
say $400 a month pulled out of your paycheck, it's set aside, you need to pay taxes on it, and then you file a claim with group insurance, and then you get reimbursed for your daycare expenses as you claim them. And then we have a wraparound medical reimbursement, which I'll talk about in just a second because it comes into play a little bit more complicated. Why would you want to do pre-tax other than not giving your money to the government? Um, you actually have more livable income because instead of giving that tax to um, the IRS and then maybe getting a, a tax refund at the end of the year, you're not paying the tax, putting it, that money back in your paycheck, so you have more livable income. So the medical reimbursement, um, set aside money pre-tax for medical expenses, prescriptions, vision, dental, medical. Um, it is a maximum of $2,500 per year per employee. So if you and your spouse both work at the state, or your spouse works at the city of Cheyenne and you work at the state, each employee can do $2,500 per year. Um, you do have to submit a claim. It's still paper. Um, and then we reimburse you the money. Um, there are, IRS does give some limitations on what can be reimbursed. So there's anything that's considered cosmetic, um, experimental. Um, the state's program doesn't allow reimbursement for over-the-counter uh, prescription, yeah, over-the-counter um, vitamins, those kinds of things. Um, so even though it's your money, it still has to be an eligible reimbursable expense. So the thing you want to make sure too, if you know you have X amount of prescriptions, you know you're going to get a pair of glasses this year, um, you can set aside the amount of money you think you're going to be able to get yourself reimbursed back. You don't want to put in $2,500 and then find out I don't really need that ACL surgery because if you can't use it, you lose it. We keep it. Um, the interesting there's a guy that the IRS says there has to be a risk on both sides. So if you, I claimed that $1,200 at the beginning of the year for my dental implant, and then in March I quit the state, group insurance is just out the money. We don't go back after it. So there's a risk on our side if you quit, and there's a risk on your side if you can't claim it. Um, I have known of a couple of folks who thought they were going to have a couple of root canals and so put. $50 a month aside to get that reimbursed once they had the services. Found out they didn't actually need the root canal, and then we're kind of forced to just get a couple of pairs of glasses to ensure that they got their money back. So, but if you can underestimate, you're good to go, or just know that you're going to spend it, but you don't want to lose money. That's not the point. Daycare. The difference with daycare, I told you the medical reimbursement, you can have it before the money's there. You just have to have a claim form and an actual EOB from Cigna or Delta or your prescription receipts and you'll be reimbursed the money. Daycare, the money has to be there first. Um, the services also have to have been incurred. So, you know, you pay your daycare up front in January because they don't give you services without having paid for it, but we don't necessarily reimburse them um, until the services have been incurred. So you kind of have to afford to be a month ahead in your daycare. And when I had one that was young enough to be in daycare, when you do this on your taxes at the end of the year, you still end up with the same tax credit at the end that's taken off of your taxable income. So it's whether you want to do it ahead of time or you want to do it after the fact. But when we're talking about the medical, I think the IRS has increased the amount you have to have to itemize your medical expenses to like 11 7. It's really tough to get 11% of your income to, to, to itemize that. So that's the other reason why the medical reimbursement is so great that to not pay 20, uh, taxes on 2,500 bucks versus whatever 11% of your income is, is just another advantage to get that tax savings. Um, this you also have to file a claim for and then we, uh, we do do direct deposit now. Um, but uh, we either cut you a check or it's just direct deposited into your account. So the wraparound medical reimbursement is a special medical reimbursement. And it's a tool. So if you have the orange, which is the high deductible health plan, a special IRS um, program, um, if you have the high deductible health plan, it makes you eligible, so says the IRS, that you can have a health savings account, which is very different from uh, medical reimbursement. However, you can have a medical reimbursement if you have the high deductible health plan. And the difference is this, this wraparound flex is still a use it or lose it, just like the other one. If you do 2500 and you can't claim it, we're going to keep it. Um, but it will only reimburse things that are not covered by the health insurance. So the regular flex, you go in and get a $200 bill at urgent care and that applies to your deductible, you're able, it's considered covered, even though you have to pay it, it's covered by the health insurance and then it counted. So your regular flex would reimburse you that. This will not because it was considered covered by the health insurance. So why on earth would you want to do this? If you have a health savings account, 
This allows you to put money, just like the Flex, into your own bank account. It's got to be a health savings account at First Interstate or wherever you bank at. It's pre-tax. <coughs> then you manage that money. So if you're putting $100 into your own HSA account at First Interstate so that in the future you can get medical re claims reimbursed to yourself, um, usually then it's a checkbook. So you have a checkbook register, you have a debit card you can use. So when you go to Safeway, you can just run that debit card and pay for your prescription out of your health savings account. That limit for the IRS is much larger than is the $2,500 limit for Flex. So you can put a ton more money in. You never lose it. Um, it's not a use it or lose it, so you can build that money up over the years. Um, so a lot of people, if they have the high deductible health plan, they're dripping money into a health savings account, which is tax-free, but then their kid has orthodontics or they get eyeglasses. They may not want to dip into this money that they're putting into the health savings account, so they can use the wraparound medical reimbursement account for their kid's dent, uh, braces, because that's not covered by the health insurance. So but this is a use it or lose it, the wrap. The HSA is not a use it or lose it. So they're just two tools that if you have the right health insurance plan, the high medical health plan. So if you have any questions or want counsel on, these are some, I mean, you have to make a decision, but it's simple and yet confusing, but you just have to know how to use it and if you can really use it to your advantage. Um, so Karen, is there like a profile of the, of the kind of um, age or health or marital situation where a person would just absolutely benefit from this? There's not anything out there in print that would, would kind of walk you through an advisement of if these are your things, these are what you might consider. The real thing with all insurance is how much risk can you handle? So I carry the $2,000 deductible because for several years now, we haven't had any real medical issues. And gosh forbid something big bad happened, I still only have a $2,000 deductible. I mean, if I have to have a $100,000 inpatient stay, I'm still only on the hook for two grand. Um, but that saves me all the money I'm not giving group insurance, the state group insurance when I'm not just for the privilege of having insurance. If you've got a really significant issue in your household where you know you're going to use your benefit all year long, you would take the $500 deductible potentially, but you have to balance how much you have to pay up front for your deductible versus how much money you're paying in premium. If you use that calculator online, figure out what your out of pocket from your paycheck is times 12 and compare that to how much you would pay for your deductible say for the whole family, you have to judge that risk on your own. Um, I hate to in any way potentially sound, I don't know what the word is, but uh, a lot of times single men, young men will take the high net health plan because they don't have any issues going on, so they save the most premium. Um, I would love to do the health savings account. You could stockpile fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 in that account over the years if you were just dripping money into it um, and use that for your retiree premiums later. You can actually will your health savings account to somebody else. Um, it still has to be used for medical expenses, um, but you control it. If let's just say I have the three thousand dollar deductible and I'll put money into a health savings account, and then I find out I blew out my knee and need to get knee surgery, I can if if the universe is working with me and I find that out in October that I need the knee surgery, I can every year in November for the open enrollment change my deductible. So I'm like, oh, I need knee surgery. So I'm going to switch to the $500 deductible because I'm going to incur services. So you can no longer contribute to your health savings account because you don't have the right account anymore, uh, deductible, but you can still use from that health savings account for your medical expenses. Um, to save tax-free money that you never lose because we're all going to have medical expenses down the road, I just think it's an invaluable tool. Um, but you have to be able to afford your deductible. Um, Three thousand dollars isn't. I mean, I have two thousand right now, so three thousand is not a much bigger stretch. For me, the issue is those prescriptions because they work so different. I don't know if my budget can can, can tolerate one hundred ninety dollars for one drug, you know. And you don't know what those drugs cost until you go in and get them. Um, so just take some pre planning, and it's kind of what we're there for. So if you need any counsel. I mean, by all means. I mean, we're always going to tell you that we can't make the decision. We're not going to recommend what you do, but just kind of help you figure out how to assess what risk you think you can handle. So, and what's interesting is that with the flex accounts, the flex reimbursement accounts, if we get audited, we are the ones that will get audited by the IRS that we reimbursed you properly or gave you things you can't have, which is why, well, it's my money. It is your money, but we can only reimburse you what the IRS says we can. When you do a health savings account, you manage that. 
Uh, we don't police that. Um, you're the one that will get audited by the IRS if you're inappropriately spending it. Not quite sure how they what flags go up there. Um, you could, let's say you have five grand in your health savings account and you're like, I'm an emergency, I need this. You can use it for something other than medical, but you'll be taxed heavily and you'll have a penalty just like you would kind of in a cashing on a 401k kind of thing. Um, but as long as you use it for medical expenses, it's tax free and you're good to go. So that's getting you enrolled and the basic benefits. Um, any questions that have popped up about any of the benefits that are on the tip of your tongue? Yeah. So then we're enrolling now, <clears throat> excuse me, in March. When you said at the beginning that it starts 31 days after your date of hire, so yesterday was my date of hire. So then I have the 31 days to sign up or make any changes, but the actual insurance will not start until April 1st. Right, if your date of hire is 31, you'll start 4 1. And technically, I mean, if you turn them in this week because you know what you want, you'll start 4 1, and that's what we'll enroll you in. Mm -hmm. But if you've thought about it later and it's like, you know, I really think I want the vision, you have until the end of April to turn in a form to revise your, your election. And then, um, no, well, and even if you change your mind and revise it, it's still three one that it would take effect. But or four one. Yes, yes, four one. Okay. Date hires three one. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I <was> just making sure. <laughs> yeah. I have a question on division. Do they send you a card or something? You know, it, I yeah, no, there is no card provision. So you um, just go and say you're a member of this it's, program. It's your social. Okay. Uh, I have vision through the state of Wyoming, okay. and they should just act. VSP is a national vision pro, uh, service plan, so you should be good. Okay. Yeah. I remember my okay, good shoot. So, um, like I said, so if our insurance starts April 1st, just for today, then will we have to then again re enroll in November? No. Uh, November is open enrollment. That, that's the period that the that group insurance allows you to make changes. Oh, okay. Yeah. You don't have to do anything and everything stays the same. Okay. All right, so we just, because we have you as an audience, we want to make sure we talk about some changes so going forward you know what to do. Um, anytime you have a qualifying event, which is your spouse has lost coverage somewhere else, or you got married, you had a baby, there was a divorce, something significant has happened that is considered a qualifying event to change your situation. Um, you have, again, 60 days for everything, 60, 60. If you miss the 60 days, you don't get insurance, or that person you're trying to add doesn't give you. You have to wait till the next open enrollment period. Um, and as always, there's the documentation deadline. Supporting documentation has to be within 30 days of the app deadline. So you have plenty of time. I will tell you that if somebody has a baby and we get the application on the 50th day from the date of birth, we're going to put that child on the date of birth because you're still within your window of opportunity. Um, but you're now going to owe potentially some additional premiums because it's been two months since a baby was born. If you're going from single to employee plus child, and we put them on, you know, December 20th, um, because you're still within your time frame, then you're just going to owe additional money. Um, if you get married, um, we've the state of Wyoming and group insurance, there is no retro. We don't do partial months. So if somebody is to get married the 15th of the month or earlier, they owe for their spouse the entire month. If you get married on the 16th of the month or after, we still put you on date of marriage. But we don't charge, start charging you for that additional person until the next month. Birth, 60 days, that's usually what gets fouled up for folks as they miss that for their baby. Um, if, so, if your spouse or somebody loses, they have loss of coverage, or you opt not to take the health insurance through the state because you've got it covered through your spouse, if you were to lose that coverage through your spouse, now you have a loss of coverage. It just can't be voluntary. You can't decide the state program is better and just drop that one. You have to um, be ineligible for it by having you know, our spouse termed or you know something to that effect. Uh, we have to know who lost coverage, when they lost it, and why. Usually a COBRA notice is the, the first thing that we get from folks because when you're offered COBRA from an employer, it means you're not eligible for their active benefits anymore. Uh, coverage goes into effect the first of the month following the receipt of your app. So birth and marriage, we put you on birthday and marriage date. Everything else is the first of the month following your app. So let's say you lose coverage through City of Cheyenne. Um, you've lost it on February 1st, and you wait until March 7th to turn in your application. You're still within your window to get applications in, but we're going to make it 4-1 because you turned your apps in in March. So just be aware um, that you could end up with a gap in coverage depending upon what your qualifying event is and what your timing is. So we give you more opportunity, but everything's the first of the month. So. Court orders, uh, divorce decree, when we get those, those aren't actually 
a court order to the state. And what's interesting is when you get divorced, your children are still your children. Your spouse is not your spouse anymore. So we will occasionally get people who turn in an application and want to add their children because they got divorced. But the, the status of your children has in no way been affected. That doesn't sound, you know what I mean, from a legal standpoint. Um, so we don't let you add your children to the program because you got divorced. Um, you're ordered to cover them somehow. It doesn't override the state's uh, program rules. Uh, permanent legal guardian, it can't be temporary. We do get applications to add their grandchild because now they're a guardian for them, but it has to be permanent. Uh, medical support order, these actually come from child support services, and this is where child support services or type situation, they're ordering the state to cover. So the, child, the employee doesn't have a choice anymore. Uh, but the big thing that comes up is a lot of folks don't realize that divorce decrees don't mean, and the divorce decree says I have that bills, I'm supposed to provide the insurance. Um, your children were your children before, they're your children now, they could have been on all along, so this court order does not mean we're going to let you add them. So. But the important thing I want you to walk away from is if you need to make changes outside of like a special open enrollment, 60 days is what I want you to walk away with. So. Open enrollment is every night, it's technically October 1 through November 30th, There's, you have two months to make changes. I don't know, we can't give you any more time than that, it's 60 days. So if you're like, you know, I think you need to change my deductible, um, your flex changes for next year are due by November 30th. Everything is kind of a drop dead November 30th. It has to be into your HR and date stamped um, by November 30th or we won't honor it. Um, you can change your deductible every year. You can add or drop dependents. Um, open enrollment, meaning carte blanche, you can just have it, no questions asked because it's open enrollment, applies to health insurance and the preventive dental. So if you aren't carrying either one of those and you decide I'm gonna add me and Johnny onto the coverage for January next year, we'll give you health and preventive. You can't have optional because there's that three year waiting period. Um, there's lots of rules that make sense to me because I do it every day. So um, I'm gonna say it again, please call us if you need anything because that's what we're there for. Um, if you're covered with health and both dentals and you just didn't cover Johnny, now you decide, you know what, I'll go ahead and put him on next year. Um, even though he's been without the optional dental for, he didn't have it, because you have it, he has to have it by default. So we would put Johnny on health and both the dentals that you have, if that's what you were elected. Um, so it's simply a coincidence <laughs> that the dental optional and the vision we allow you to do during open enrollment, that's the time frame, but it doesn't mean you can just automatically have it. So you may apply for health because you didn't have it and we give it to you, but we deny you the optional dental because you haven't met the three year waiting period. So um, semantics, but it's important that what open enrollment really means is health and preventive dental. We offer retiree insurance, which is actually pretty awesome. I do think there's plenty of big employers that don't tell you to let the door hit you in the rear on the way out, but you walk out and you don't have any insurance to continue on. Um, so it's pretty awesome that we do. You don't have to qualify um, for your pension in order to be a retiree in our eyes. You just have to uh, be 50 years of age and have worked for at least four years or just have 20 years of service. If those two, any of those are met, then you can keep insurance as a retiree once you exit the state. Um, we have to be notified that you're terminating. We send you a retiree packet and then it's up to you to enroll in the parts or pieces you want to keep. Um, the one caveat, let's just say you work for, for 10 years and you're 60 and you retire, you decide, I'm like, this is pretty great, I'm gonna keep the dental in the life or I'm gonna just keep vision or I, you want the whole ball of wax. You have to have had your own coverage or your dependents covered for at least 12 months before retiring. We have had incidences where somebody qualifies as a retiree, they've left, they just added their spouse on during open enrollment January and then that June they retired, their spouse was not and we didn't let them keep their spouse on, it was awful. But he wasn't able to change his retirement date. He had to do it in June. So, and the, the employee is responsible for <laughs> They have to get insurance somewhere else. No, I mean, oh, yeah, yes, yes. Retiree insurance is 100% paid by the employee. Currently, there is a retiree subsidy that, um, based on how many years of service you have, you get a credit towards your health. Um, it's eleven fifty a month if you're not Medicare eligible, times however many years. So 35 years of service, 30 years of service is the max. 30 years of service times 1150 is going to give you $345 credit off your health, um, only the health. So if you took dental and vision, you get no subsidy. Uh, and then once you're Medicare eligible, the rates go down. 
um, and so does your subsidy. It's five seventy five per month um, per year of service. You have maxing at thirty. One hundred seventy two fifty is the credit. So dare I say, since I'm being recorded, better than poke in the eye, but it's it's a, it still helps out a little bit. But otherwise, you pay it. Um, here's a copy of the flex claim form. It's out on our website. Um, if you fill out the claim form, there's a medical section and then the daycare, so there's only one form. Um, we need the EOB from Delta Dental or the explanation of benefits from Cigna. Um, that shows what you're really liable for as a member. So just because you paid Cheyenne, OBGYN, 800 bucks, the EOB shows you're only responsible for 760. We're going to reimburse you 760. The great part about making sure that you see, like I said, that contracted provider is that even though there's a percentage that's paid, anything above that percentage, if they're a contracted uh, provider, they can't bill you for it. So, unfortunately, when I go to the doctor, I don't, I don't say I know too much, but oh, it'll, be, it'll be this much money. And I say, is that with the contracted discount or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because I don't want to pay more than I'm supposed to have to. A lot of times you pay it, and using insurance, you've really got to be an educated consumer. You have to know what you're doing, not to suggest you be taken advantage of, but just to use it the best way possible. Um, you get a bill, you pay it, and find out later you weren't supposed to have to. Well, look at your money back, and then it just, you just have to do a bunch of hard uh, work and hoops. So, just if you have any questions, call us and just pay attention to your insurance if you can. It's not the funnest, but um, it's important. So, this is the claim form. There is a flex change form out on our website too. If you didn't do um, medical reimbursement and now you have a baby, well, now you have an additional dependent you're going to incur expenses on. You can add daycare. You can add medical reimbursement. This form is great because it gives you some of the examples of what constitutes you being allowed to modify your flex. Um, your spouse terminates employment, and so now he's, he or she's not working. Well, you don't need daycare, so you can drop the daycare. Um, your kid is in daycare, but now they start kindergarten mid-year, so you need to drop it or reduce it. You can do that. Um, so just know that that's out there. It takes, you've got 60 days to do it. Um, the hard part to keep in mind too, is somebody has a baby, so they're like, oh, I'm gonna increase my medical reimbursement. However, it takes effect the first month following your flex change form. So you have a baby in, in February, turn in your form in February, we make the change 3-1. So that would be for services incurred 3-1 forward. So you're not gonna be able to increase it and then go backwards and get money for claims that were prior to that. Um, bookmark our website for all your insurance need. Um, it's just EGI at wild.gov. Our booklets are out there, applications, um, the schedule for when deadlines are for the medical reimbursement and when they pay out is out there. Um, our benefit press newsletter, um, we send it out electronically through uh, Google Mail. That's where you'll find copies to that. This will give you links to get to Cigna, Delta, all sorts of exciting places. Uh, we do have videos out on the website. They're being revamped probably within the next 90 days. Um, so the health and the dental is a little bit outdated because our deductibles did just change January 1. Um, but if you want a refresher later, the basic bones of it is the same. There's actually words down below the video that tells you what's, what's different than the video, but you can go out and watch those if you want. Any questions? Yes. Could you rephrase what you um, said about the contracted network? Yeah, absolutely. The thing to, to do is to, you've got in and in. If you're in network and in Wyoming, it pays at 85%. Um, and you're only responsible for you know, the other 15. Um, if you're out of network and out of Wyoming, it pays at 60%. Those are the two, like the bread on the hamburger. The two in the middle um, is if you're either in network and out of Wyoming or out of Wyoming and in-network, um, they pay at 75%. But globally, any services you have done, if you can at all costs try to see a contracted employee, a contracted <laughs> provider, they've signed a contract and agreed to a discount. So even though it might pay at 75%, if they're contracted, you're responsible for the 25%, but nothing else above it. Um, if you see somebody that's in Wyoming, but they're not contracted with Cigna, you're going to pay the 25% and then anything else above and beyond that they're going to bill. But well, what do you mean by above and beyond? Well, if they bill $200 for a visit and Cigna's uh, agreed upon contracted amount with them is $75, uh, $50. Did I say $100? It's $100. They bill $100 and the contracted amount that's allowed is $50. bucks. they are going to pay 75% of the $50. Bucks. You pay the difference. 
but then there's still another $50 above the allowed amount that they build, you're going to be responsible for that too. So to minimize how much you have to pay, if you can see a contracted provider, they have to, they write that off, they eat it. Um, but if they're not contracted, they may accept our payment, you're stuck with the 25% of the allowed plus anything up to what they actually build. Okay. So in network is always your best advantage. But I mean, because if he still pays at 75%, you can doctor wherever you want to, just know that you might be on the hook for a little bit more. Okay. So okay. yeah, pay attention to your EOBs when you get them from Cigna because that really will spell out. You can see, oh my god, my doctor billed $354 for a sports physical. Are you kidding? That kind of stuff helps drive premiums and drive healthcare as well. Um, I might consider taking them somewhere else. But um, you can see how much of it was billed, how much of it was allowed, and then it will show you on the explanation benefits what the employee or the member liability actually is. So you know how much you're really responsible. If you were to check for $80 and it says you owe 53, you'd be calling Mr. Dennis saying, you know, I got my EOB and it says I only owe this, and they shouldn't give you a hard time to get your money back. But just be cognizant. Those EOBs come out from Delta and, e and Cigna every time they process a claim. So you should get that every single time. If you're facing anything, though, do call our office. Do, do, do. What's yes? The, is that the same for Alex? What? The for, a oh, that's for everybody. Okay. Yep. Usually your AWAC or TPO1 or probationary <coughs> is only um, how much match they get or what waiting periods for enrollment are. But everything's the same for everybody. Uh, the direct line is 777-6835 is our main number. Do you guys help, like if we had an IRA something else, do you guys help us roll that over or who do we talk to about that? That's a good question. I'd go to my HR. The IRS for next presentation. Okay. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. <laughs> good. <laughs> do you have any diminutive oh, about rates? Um, I don't. I don't know, Chris, if you've got the ability, if you wanted to pull up the website, we can kind of present what, unless people need a potty break or something, we can pull it up if you want to look at it. Uh, the rates are out on our website, and they're pretty, um, it gives you the state contribution as well. So since you know the math is match minus the life minus the health insurance, and in fact, on the website, there's a calculator mm -hmm. as well. So, it doesn't help you fill that out right now. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you really wanted to, for the sake of you guys being able to do it, um, and then even give us a ring today, um, you could print off a rate sheet off the website and then give everybody one you need. Okay. Um, we'll, uh, we'll conclude the presentation when there are no more questions, and then we'll pull up the rates for anyone okay. who wants to stay during That's the break. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> all right. Well, that's all I've got. If you need something, uh, give me a shout, or us a shout. So, thank, thank you very you, much, thank you. Karen. Yeah, that's what.